The Ballad of the Boundary Line by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly Here shall the boundary line be laid. Not so, but here, the other said. Clamor of contest ran fierce and high, defiant challenge and proud reply. For heights of the Andes rose between the Chilean states and the Argentine. In the mooted question day by day was what doth limit my neighbor's sway? The sunlight rose and the shadows fell on either slope, but none could tell just where the morning's magic wand touched the Argentine or chilly land. Fair in their verdure, pure in their snow, so near to heaven their summits go. Why should they ever by man be trod? Twould seem they should only belong to God. But the strife went on with passing years, fed by resentment and pride and fears. Nor priest nor people could yet define the rightful range of the boundary line. The strife went on with its loss and shame as generations went and came, and each in its turn the task essayed to solve the problem so long delayed. Then kinder, kinglier thought prevailed, where threat of sword and gun had failed, and love illuminated, reason wrought, the adjustment long so vainly sought. How far can a trifle of earth and air with the worth of human lives compare? And what can it matter if thine or mine be the narrow side of the boundary line? And why should greed and grim distrust despoil us of our faith and trust? Enough, enough, let us pledge our word to settle by judgment, not by sword. Let us heed the counsel our good priests bring and raise the standard of Christ our King. In the here and there of the boundary line, let God and the British King define. Then the mother heart of the nation stirred, as the fair de Costa's plea was heard. Fathers and brothers, warriors, men, shall we give our bravest to death and pain? Shall we hush our hearts as we see them go? God pity to strive with a brother foe. Long we have waited, have suffered and prayed, for a joy still denied us, a hope still delayed. Enough! Let the sun in highest heaven pencil the line for which you have striven. Let a princely people on either side in friendship and fair accord abide. Be the strife of the past to the wild wind swept, the faith of the future unservingly kept, and let the Christ of the Andes rest in token of peace on the mountain's crest. Grandly the people made reply, the pledge was taken, the alms laid by. And glad thanksgiving and festal song witnessed the joy of the gathered throng. 
joy for the strife of the past war joy for the promise of war no more joy in the gladness of land and home joy for the world-wide peace to come on snow-tipped height of the andean range they planted the statue fair and strange and there to the query of the night its bronze and granite make reply i witness the failure of the sword the victory of the love sent word to dust may crumble rock and hill this pledge of nations abideth still so now the boundary line is laid Christ in the heart hath the conflict stayed. And now doth the Christ of the Andes rest in token of peace on the mountain's crest. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Margaret Lee by Hannah Lavina Bailey. Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly. Margaret Lee. You do not know her? Rightly named, a pearl is she. Half a score of years I've loved her. Precious Margaret Lee. Dimples? No nor golden tresses, nor yet voice of silvery tone, if such phrases must express her, beauty she has none. Soft brown hair and gray eyes dreaming, visions that none others see, plain her features, you might call her, homely Margaret Lee. Margaret owns no stately mansion, carries not a heavy purse, heiress to no lordly acres, humble station hers. Quietly she treads life's highway, quiet yet with noble mien, mid the lolly, mid the lofty, journeying like a queen. Some have called her cold and haughty, from her bearing high and free. Some have said a lofty spirit dwells with Margaret Lee. Why then do the heavy laden hail with joy her coming nigh, while the children love her shadow as she patheth by? Some have deemed her weak, erratic, some too self-reliant, strong. One avers her mood too gloomy, one too light her song. All may be the clouds of error, oft times overshade her way, hiding with the rough and changeful paths of duty lay but unseen by mortal vision daily bends a supplement knee humbly bows a contrite spirit praying margaret lee asking of the all-forgiving pardon for her erring life seeking wisdom faith and patience for its coming strife so with footstep sometimes faltering but with steadfast hope in god keeps she still a blithesome journey o'er thy earthly road and at last all loss and failure lost in mercy it may be Heaven's gate of pearl will open for sweet 
Margaret Lee. There redeemed from sin and sorrow, there from care and conflict free, she will walk the angel city, angel Margaret Lee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Soaring Upward by Hannah Lavina Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Scott Kelly A GM lingering on the threshold of eternity looked lovingly back to tell of the glory revealed to her purified vision. Angels awaiting, she whispered, and all is beautiful, beautiful. Then, as her spirit winged its happy way, a sweet murmur again was heard, and the words were, soaring upward, upward into heaven. They call thee dead. They say that thou art gone. Forevermore from earth, it is not so. I know thy gentle spirit will return and linger fondly round the loved below. They call thee dead, and now thou art not ours. God touch thee, for thy work on earth was done. Thy presence was to us like summer flowers, and they are faded now, and thou art gone. I had not thought, fair girl, that thou couldn't die. I knew thee gentle, innocent, and gay, and dreamed not that the brightness of thine eye was destined thus so soon to fade away. Tis well, he giveth his beloved sheep. O sleeper, thou so early loved and blessed, say, were it wrong, if we who linger weep and long to sleep like thee and be at rest. I we who linger should not idlers be. They hath appointed work from morn till even. And while we wait, tis sweet to think of thee as soaring upward, upward into heaven. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The End of the Road by Hannah Lavinia Bailey Read for LibriVox.org by Melanie T Do you wonder at my smiling? Do you wonder that I faint not neath the burden of my load? Oh, the gloom and toil and duty Change to light and praise and beauty While I'm looking toward the end of the road. Though the way is long and dreary and I languish for a happier, a more serene abode. As the light of earth grows dimmer, looking up, I see the glimmer of its glory at the end of the road. Though the talent seemeth meagre, and my sovereign lord doth gather ever where he hath not strode, yet I would not therefore spurn it, but with usury return it at his coming at the end of the road. Though now I go forth with weeping, if I bear the precious seed which the master would have sowed, I shall come again with singing, sheaves of plenty with me bringing, to his harvest at the end of the road. Peace shall follow tribulation, this the boon divine compassion upon mortal hath bestowed, heavy now the cross I'm bearing, Bright the crown I'll soon be wearing in the temple at the end of the road. End of poem. 
This recording is in the public domain. End of the Sea and Other Verses by Hannah Lavinia Bailey <laughs>